Welcome to NCW Before They Were Stars. I'm JC. I'm going to be hanging out with you here. Uh, unfortunately, because we're in the middle of this crazy, unprecedented worldwide pandemic, I don't have the amazing NCW announce team here doing this for you. You're going to have to hang out with me. I, I do truly apologize. This wouldn't be my first choice. But there may be nobody better than me to go into the archives to open up the vault and look through the history of Northeast Championship Wrestling and see those that kind of started an NCW and would go on to great acclaim all over the national pro wrestling scene. So while I sit here with you in a sports jacket and pantless, let's look back into the history of Northeast Championship Wrestling and to find out where they were before they were stars. The Hollywood Hunt is a six man tag team action. I'm the man. The team of Chris Pierre. I don't have a picture of Cassius, but I know you're wearing his own panties. One of those superstars that comes to mind is a young Johnny Armadillo who made his NCW debut on December 29th, 2000 in Seekonk, Massachusetts where Armadillo would compete in six-man tag team action teaming with the Wild Man Beast who you know today as the president of NCW, Dean the Beast Livesley and Duff, a man you would have no idea who he is unless you really followed localized Connecticut wrestling 20 plus years ago, teaming up to take on the trio of Crippler Craig Steele, Bad Boy Billy Black, no, no, not that one, the, the other one, and Showcase Pro Wrestling legendary promoter Chris Blackheart. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. 
Armadillo would go on to become known as Johnny Curtis, winning the NCW Tag Team Championship with the Dancing Devil Damian Houston, and then would eventually defeat K.L. Murphy to become the NCW New England Champion, where he would defend that title against all comers, including a championship challenge against Extreme Adam Hasty back in April 2002 at NCW's five-year reunion in Bristol, Rhode Island.
there was Mike Canellis, there was Mike Bennett. And Mike Bennett would arrive in NCW during the spring of 2009 to help out his heat-seeking running mate, Revolution Chris Venom, to challenge for the NCW Tag Team Championship against the reigning champions, the Air Devils, the duo of Brandon Webb and Anthony Stone. Now, Chris Venom's Heat Seekers would feature an array of, of talent that would be working under the free bird rules, meaning talent such as the egomaniac Johnny Idol or Grayson Alexander or Mike Bennett himself would be able to partner with Venom and challenge against any tag team in NCW. While the Heat Seekers would go on to win the tag team championship at Reunion that year, the first appearance of Mike Bennett would take place in Dedham, Massachusetts at NCW Silence the Violence, where Venom and Bennett would challenge for the tag team titles against the Air Devils. And during the middle of the match, the middle rope would snap in half while Brandon Webb was being Irish whipped into the ropes, crashing him to the outside, creating chaos and unknown as the Heat Seekers would attempt to become NCW Tag Team Champions in Bennett's NCW debut. <laughs>
ladies and gentlemen, your winners via disqualification and still NCW Tag Team Champions, the Air Devils. Yeah. 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 for a minute about Taylor Hendricks. While Taylor would become one of the most prominent female wrestlers to come out of New England, having an incredible stint in Ring of Honor as well as Impact Wrestling, Taylor actually began her NCW career as a manager, leading The Creeper and the Monster Cenobite in tag team action, challenging for the NCW tag team titles against the reigning champions Dynamic John Thornhill and the average guy Timothy Pittman, Generation Slam. This match would take place in November 2006 in Palm Fret, Connecticut, and this quickly became one of my favorite NCW tag team matches of all time. You know, NCW in 2006, we were still trying to figure things out, trying to see where we would go and what we would become after a two-year hiatus. And this match really helped shape and inform what we would become over the next couple of years, focusing in on the up-and-coming talent in New England.
would become an incredible athlete in her own right and would eventually go on to challenge Generation Slam's manager, Amber, at the NCW reunion in 2011 in Dedham, Massachusetts. <laughs>
On the next NCW Before They Were Stars, we take a look at the man who would become Donovan Dijakovic in NXT. We go before the Spirit Squad with Broadway Ken Phoenix, and we take a look back at the referee to retrosexual evolution of Anthony Green, all on the next NCW Before They Were Stars. <laughs> 